Hi friends, hello the world. Welcome back to this episode of Complaint Free Life with your host, the Sal Romanova. So today's topic is going to be about harmony, in particular when harmonious relationships are harmful. And I hope that I will not chase you away from the beginning by introducing this topic because many of you probably have an expectation that harmonious relationship is good. That's what we're all seeking for. And why on earth are you introducing things that we don't want to talk about or think about, but rather keep our harmony? <laughs> If that's the case, then uh, I think this episode is specifically for you. <laughs> So please hear me out until the end, and then you will make your um, conclusion as to what to think about it. So before we start talking about harmony and harmonious relationships, I would like to prompt you to think about certain questions, such as why do you think you need harmony in relationships or in work cultures or in offices, right? Uh, wherever you have uh, relationships, why do you seek for harmony? What are the benefits and costs of harmony in your growth? And I'll explain to you all of this later, uh, my uh, answers to this, and uh, you will also see what I mean by it. And the last question I want to prompt you to ask your brain is, when is harmony harmful? So now coming to the topic of harmony, uh, when I Googled to find out what the exact definition of it was, uh, Google gave me a lot of uh, answers in relation to music industry, especially think of an orchestra where, uh, you know, everyone is harmoniously playing things together to produce one music for us. And that's a beautiful thing, because if it wasn't the case, we wouldn't be able to listen to it and therefore not enjoy it, da -da -da, right? So that's where the harmony seems to be coming from. And um, the other thing is that uh, when you go to a... Um, Uh, opera, for instance, in the beginning before the opera starts, you notice that people are all separately practicing their instruments and it's very not harmonious. And when you hear that, you're like, oh, I hope that it will all stop and then we have the opera starting soon, right? So um, that's the concept of harmony and harmonious uh, way of doing things. In other words, Uh, my definition would be uh, the need for agreeable, uh, peaceful relationship that we're all wanting, which we are labeling as harmonious relationship. Um, now, the question is, why do we need it? And when actually it could be harmful for us? And I, as I said, I encourage you to um, answer these questions for yourself. So these are the answers that I came up with. And I want to also give you an example of what I, what type of uh, situations I'm talking about. So I uh, remember uh, several instances in my work career where uh, people above me, meaning my managers, had this idea that we all should be working harmoniously where no um, fights or no... Uh, um, conflicts between colleagues happening and everyone just get along with everyone and everyone is doing their best to perform so that we all get the wonderful result in the end to help uh, people that we're serving, right? So that was the idea of, or the expectation that my some of my managers had. Now, whenever we have that type of expectation and we think that that is the standard in our relationship, in other words, that unless this is how the relationship is, I don't really be, I don't really want to be in this relationship, right? So somehow we've developed this concept that uh, unless it's harmonious, unless it's everyone's getting along and agreeing and everything, uh, our relationship is considered something wrong or our relationship needs to be fixed. So we consider if it's not harmonious or it's not agreeable and peaceful and where people just get along with each other and love each other, if it's not the case, then it's a problem, right? That, that's the assumption that many of us have. And that's a standard somehow else I think we have. 
Now, the problem with that type of expectation, be it, be it in workplace or at home in the personal relationships, is that um, our brains may not want to address the actual issues that individual people are having in that relationship if we're always seeking harmony. Because essentially, uh, as soon as we want to address those issues, we start from the point of view as if they are the troublemakers and we need to bring them back to harmony and to the peaceful environment where we're at. And as long as someone keep asking questions, we consider that person a the difficult person or the troublemaker or the person who's not part of us or whatever, right? So that's why I find that um, harmonious uh, relationship standard can actually be harmful sometimes because we are setting the standards like this way and then one of us or some of us are not having similar expectation. And then this part, this group keeps then saying, well, if you don't really fit into our standard, then you're not really part of us or you are a troublemaker or something needs to be fixed. So that's the part that I'm saying where uh, harmonious relationship standard expectation might be actually disturbing us or not really serving us in addressing individual issues in relationships or individual concerns in relationships. And from the physiological perspective of our brain, it probably also makes sense why we always seek for, uh, I mean, many of us, I should say, probably uh, seek for uh, harmony is because uh, non-harmonious means unknown, right? Unpredictable. And our brains don't tend to like unpredictable things or un uh, unknown things because we don't know what the danger there is. Therefore, we like being in the predictability and the certainty, right? Um, whatever we think is certain. Therefore, uh, this uh, disturbance of harmony could always be perceived as something unknown and therefore we don't really like it. Excuse me. So once um, we notice this uh, expectation of ours, so my goal here is really encourage you to check with yourself if you have this type of expectations in relationships and how that expectation might be affecting the way you deal with um, questions the other person in the relationship might be posing that you consider is disturbing that agreeable, wonderful, uh, happy relationship. And you could also ask yourself questions like, uh, why do you need harmony as such? And do you consider when the other person is asking questions that you consider disturbing your harmony? Is it because you are insecure about something because you're feeling defensive? Then it's actually the questions more about you and your own mindset rather than the person asking these questions in the, um, in the relationship, right? Because if we didn't have any problem with uh, anything and we didn't even seek for harmony as such but we assume that every one of us is unique in our own ways and we will always have different questions to each other uh, we'll always have our own ways of thinking about things and therefore it will always be different from others thinking therefore it's natural that people ask questions and people question uh, why things are the way they are then we don't really have a problem addressing it because we recognize why and where it's coming from. And we just try to respond the way that we know how to and the way as well others will. So whenever we ask questions why, we are first thinking that this type of relationship is not mine, meaning I really want a harmonious relationship, then it might be uh, time to ask why that is. What is it that we're trying to achieve by having a harmonious relationship? Is it we are expecting that harmonious relationship equals happiness? Are we expecting harmonious relationship to be a road to success? In other words, like in the opera or orchestra, sorry, um, unless they all get together and do their own bits in the team, they can't produce a, a, a song. Is it the same uh, expectation we have about teams? Um, and even if we do have that expectation, is that really true? 
So these are the questions that we could ask to see uh, what's going on. And now I want you to consider what might be the costs for always wanting to have the harmonious relationship or a harmonious team uh, where everyone gets along with everyone. So the costs could be if har for the sake of harmony, we are suppressing truth in individuals. Meaning that if I cannot tell my truth or what's going on within me or what's going on with my, uh, within me that I cannot express to the outer world, to my team, because I don't want to disturb that harmony, then it could be problematic because then we are a bit forced into being in that, uh, in that uh, scene or in that um, environment without really contributing fully with all our thoughts, with all of our contributions, basically. And uh, we may not even feel comfortable sometimes to uh, constructively convey our messages of why we think this wouldn't work or this would work or whatever. So that's why um, this idea of uh, us not disturbing and in the sake of for the sake of not doing it we just hold on to our truths within us we keep just suppressing and suppressing this will always play out bad in the end we all know it right so it's a bit like um, swallowing and swallowing and one day you cannot tolerate it and you get everything out <laughs> and then we're like oh no we thought we were in very harmonious uh, setting and now apparently that's not the case Right, um, so that what might be the uh, problematic uh, areas that we should be looking at, and uh, also um, we know it like in family settings that uh, we tend to have this harmony for the outside world uh, to show, but a lot of mess is happening beside be, um, behind the scenes, so to say. And that could be another uh, issue where we are really holding on to this concept of family should be harmonious and it should be seen as such, but inside it's not really, then again, this becomes like a facade that we are all suffering under, yet we are being, we're betraying basically um, our truths in the name of some concept. Right, so it's a bit like um, everyone should be happy uh, in in the family, and then you know you tell people like, oh, you should be happy because and because because, and then expecting magically that person becomes happy, but that's not the case. So you can see that um, uh, like craving for harmony uh, may actually have costs that we really need to be aware of whether it's having the cost of suppressing uh, certain things that should come out to the surface or things that people don't have space to really discuss honestly and um, with heartfelt discussions because of being uh, feeling judged or because of uh, feeling uh, fearful of uh, disturbing the, um, the family dynamic or the harmony. So that's why um, I was thinking that how can we create uh, harmony or how can we make harmonious relationship without having the mm, harmful, harmful effect of it, if it's possible. So the way that I've come to realize, at least in my experience, and of course, my experience may differ from yours, but consider this. The more we seek for harmony, the more we can't get it. <laughs> and it's, uh, yeah, I think it's one of those um, situations where we care about someone so much that we want to do good things for that person and we keep uh, getting involved in their lives and trying to help and everything and then in the end that person gets annoyed and annoyed and in the end we actually get distance from each other because the person's saying what the hell you are uh, you know meddling in my life yet we really want to do good things and keep meddling and then we realize actually 
the reason why we wanted to medal was to show our affection, to show we care and to show that we want uh, to get along, but actually it's creating the opposite effect for that person and for us. So that's why in the end, we're not getting what we're actually seeking for. And I feel like um, harmony is a bit like that as well, is that as long as we keep searching for it or keep pressuring to be in harmonious relationship, we're actually getting less of it or not at all. The other solution or the other realization that I've come to is that um, the more you want to uh, seek for harmony, the more you could be searching in yourself for answers as to why that is and what's missing or what's lacking that you're trying to compensate with harmony. Um, because in the end of the day, we know that what that harmonious relationship is our mental construct of what we expect in a relationship. And it's our own judgment of whether this is harmonious or not, right? It's not like someone's going to come over and say, yeah, this is harmonious relationship. Yeah, this is not harmonious because it's very subjective anyway. So that's why um, the solution that I've realized is that the, the more we respect and love individual differences and let the persons be the way they are, the more harmonious our relationship becomes. As you can see, it might be very like counterintuitive in so many ways because what I'm uh, suggesting from the orchestra point of view, if we look at the tangible uh, example, right? And the tangible example, if we let everyone do whatever they want, then probably we wouldn't produce a music that, but then you could say, maybe that's how jazz is um, born. <laughs> I don't know anything about jazz, but whenever I listen to jazz, I think of it, orchestra gone wild. <laughs> so um, anyway, when I'm, when I'm talking about harmonious relationship, that's, I think, the key is actually us letting ourselves be who we are truly and expressing and being that person that we want to be. And the same way we let the other person in the relationship be who they are and do the things the way they want to do. And then not try to force any of us, me or the other person into the harmonious relationship. And whenever there is this space for each of the persons to express themselves, to be who they are, be accepted who they are and be loved for who they are, then relationships actually become harmonious, meaning loving relationship where we actually know each other's perspective we are okay with disagreeing yet we still love each other this type of um, relationship right so if you are um yeah if you are searching for harmony this seems to be the solution i know it's hard and hard in a sense of not having expectations and not having even expectation of not harmonious relationship and probably we're in some ways very wired to seek for that peaceful relationship or the loving relationship or the agreeable relationship which we usually label as harmonious um, but whenever your brain gets to that point you could always say wait a minute why am i seeking for harmony what's missing in me, what's, what am I craving for actually, but instead of looking at my own issues, I'm just trying to change the other person in this name of keeping our harmony. So friends, I hope you uh, found this useful. If you have any questions or you didn't really get some of the things I was talking about, please do tell me uh, and I'll try to explain more. And also I've written a blog post about this as well. So you can also read more and find out uh, what you think about it and apply some of the concept and see where it takes you. Thank you so much. Happy Friday and talk to you next Friday. Bye.